بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is lecture 2 on basic computer skills and in this lecture we're going to continue talking about hardware We will start this lecture by talking about computer peripherals First of all we will define this term what is a computer peripheral It is any external device that provides input and output for a computer. Let us give some examples. A keyboard and a mouse. A monitor and a printer. All of these are computer peripherals. What is the difference between them? A keyboard and a mouse are input peripherals while a monitor and printer are output peripherals so again what is the difference between input and output input device is any hardware that sends data or instruction to a computer what does it mean so if you are typing on a keyboard so when you press any key you will send something to the computer you will send for example numbers or letters again if you use the mouse when you click on something on the screen you are sending some instruction to the computer so this is the meaning of input device On the other hand, output devices are doing the opposite thing. Why? Because they send data or information from a computer to another device or users. For example, the monitor or the screen. Okay. On the screen, you will see pictures for example or video or text so this is kind of output because what is shown on the monitor it comes from the computer okay so here on this slide you can see some examples of those computer peripherals like the printer the scanner the webcam and the speaker we are going to talk in details about each one of these on the coming slides but just to make sure that you understand the difference between input and output device if i show you this diagram so if this is a computer so anything send something from outside into the computer we call it input device any hardware that takes something from the computer to outside we call it output okay this is out output okay let us carry on printers so one example of peripherals or computer peripherals is a printer a printer is a device used to print documents photos or anything that appears on the screen There are many types of printers. We can mention here inkjet printers. It looks like this picture. Laser jet printer, like this picture, and photo printers. Okay. And sometimes you find what we call it all-in-one printers. What does it mean? It can print, it can scan, and it can copy documents so those kind of printers have several functions they print they scan and they copy the second example of peripherals is the scanner again the scanner is a hardware device used to copy a physical 
a physical image or document and save it to your computer as a digital image. For example, if you have an image or if you have a picture on a page and you want to transfer that picture from the paper to the computer, we are going to put that image on top of a scanner and then scan it. Okay, when it is scanned, it will be displayed on the screen. So it is copied from physical image, which is a page or a paper, and now it becomes digital image. Speakers and headphones. Those two examples, the speakers and the headphones, are both output devices. Again, why we call them output devices? Because they send information from the computer to the user. If you remember, we said that any hardware device that sends information from the computer to the user or to the outside, we call them output devices. So, in this case, they allow us to hear sound and music. Okay? When we connect uh, headphones or a speaker, we can hear the sound coming from the computer. Okay? We can connect those two peripherals either by using USB port or sometimes by using the audio port. I'm sure you now understand the difference between these two because it's already mentioned in lecture one, in the previous lecture. Okay? Sometimes you don't need to connect a speaker or a headphone to hear the sound. Why? Because some monitors also have built in speakers. So you can hear the sound without connecting any external speaker or headphones. Coming to the microphone. Okay. The microphone is an input device. Why we call it input device? Because it sends data from outside the computer into inside it. So a computer used to record sound or talk with someone else over the internet. Okay? So if you like to record your voice, you can use a microphone. If you are talking to somebody over the internet using any uh, software or any website, again, you will use the microphone. So that microphone will record your sound and send it to the, to the computer. The webcam or the web camera is also a type of input device because it can record videos and take pictures. So, for example, if your desktop uh, comes without a camera or if your laptop comes without a camera, you can get an external one, either like this one or any style of external webcam, connect it to your computer, and then you can use it for taking pictures or recording video. Also, those webcams can transmit video over the internet in real time, which allows for video chat or video conferencing with someone else. Like what we do these days, we can use Zoom, we can use Google Meet. So with those webcams, we can carry on a real time con conversation. Another example of computer peripherals is the game controller or sometimes we call it the joystick. And I think most of you are familiar with those kind of peripherals. A game controller is used to control games, of course. Joystick also used to control games. So let me 
ask this question are these input devices or output devices mostly they are input device why because they send instruction from outside to the computer uh, or the to the game or digital camera again a digital camera is kind of peripherals why because sometimes we connect a digital camera to a computer you know that the digital camera capture pictures and video in digital format and store it in a memory inside it now if we like to transfer those pictures from the camera into a computer we need to connect this camera with a USB port okay and then after that you can transfer the image from the camera to the computer so in this situation we can consider the camera as an input device because it sends data which are pictures in the situation into the computer or sometimes videos also okay so all of these are peripherals digital camera game controllers microphones webcams speakers and headphones scanners and printers now let us carry on in lecture one we talked about desktop computer and we explain some hardware components of the desktop computer now if we talk about the laptop computer and to see the differences between a desktop and a laptop at the beginning a laptop is a personal computer so it is similar like a desktop but what is the difference it is easily moved why it is easily moved because it is lighter than it is not heavy like the desktop computer so it is easily moved and also it is port portable you can carry it with you from one place to another place most laptops have all the functionalities of a desktop computer Okay, so if you have a desktop or if you have a laptop, you can do the same with both of them. So you can run the same software, you can open the same type of files. However, laptops are more expensive than comparable desktop computer. So if you have a desktop computer with some specifications, and you have a laptop with the same specification of the desktop so if you compare between the price of course laptops are more expensive than desktops okay one difference between a desktop and laptop in desktop you use the mouse in laptop you can of course connect a mouse but within the laptop you have this area what we call it touch pad a touch pad also called trackpad is a touch sensitive pad so it is sensitive that lets you control the pointer by making a drawing motion with your finger so just if you put your finger on top of this touch pad just move your finger so it will work like a mouse if you just click again it works like a mouse one difference also between a desktop and a laptop that laptops have batteries every laptop has a battery which allows you to use the laptop when it is not plugged in so 
desktop you cannot use it when it is not plugged in when it is not connected to the power to the electricity however because on laptops we have batteries so we can use it even when it is not plugged in so when you plug in your laptop the battery recharge another benefit of having battery is that it can provide backup power to the laptop if the power goes off if you are working and suddenly the power goes off you can still continue for some time for an hour or maybe two hours why because you have a battery with that battery you can still run your laptop okay AC adapter a laptop usually has a specialized power cable something like this this is what we call it the AC adapter it is designed to be used with that specific type of laptop so we use this one to plug in the laptop to the power if you remember we talked about ports when we talked about desktop again in laptops we have ports most laptops have the same types of ports although they usually have fewer ports to, to save space if we compare between a desktop and a laptop we can notice that the number of ports in the, in the laptop is less for example if we think about the USB port we can find two or three or maybe four maximum on a laptop but on desktop you we can find maybe six or maybe eight uh, USB ports so because we don't have that much space within laptops so the number of ports are less now how is a laptop different from a desktop in the previous slides we mentioned some differences like the touchpad like the batteries and so on now laptops has an all in one design what does this mean a monitor a keyboard a touchpad and speakers comes as one unit so you don't need to connect for example the monitor to the computer case or you don't need to connect the keyboard or the mouse to the computer like what you did or what you do on within a desktop all of these things comes as one unit so this is what we call it all in one design another point is a laptop is also quicker to set up because it comes as one unit so just open it take it out from the bag for example just start it a laptop can connect other peripherals similar to the desktop like a mouse or maybe you, you like to connect a larger monitor and other peripherals you can easily disconnect the peripherals and take the laptop with you wherever you go now let us talk about the last topic on this lecture mobile devices what is a mobile device a mobile device is any type of handheld computer handheld computer it means you can carry it on your hand so it is not that heavy and not that big because of that 
you can carry it with your hand. So this is the meaning of handheld computer. These devices are designed to be extremely portable. So they are more portable than a laptop. And they can often fit in your hand, as I mentioned. Some examples of mobile devices are tablets, e-readers, and smartphones. These are three examples of mobile devices. Let us talk about the first example, the tablet, Ta or call it with tablet computers. Tablet computers are designed to be portable. So they are small, they are light, and they are uh, portable. Tablet computers do not have keyboard or a touchpad. So as we can see here, no keyboard or no uh, touchpad or no mouse. So what is, how can we use it? The screen is a touch sensitive. So because it is touch sensitive, you can use it for typing using a virtual keyboard. So when you want to type, so you will see a keyboard within the screen and then you can touch the keyboard with your, with your fingers. The same what you, as you do it on your mobile phones, for example. Also, you can use your finger as a mouse pointer. So instead of using a mouse, just use your finger to move one object from one place to another place or to click on a button or to click on an icon you can use your finger. The second example of mobile devices is ebook readers. As you can see it it is similar to tablets. It looks like a tablet. Ebook readers or we call it e-readers are similar to tablet computers. So what is the difference? So they are mainly designed for reading ebooks. So they are tablet computers designed for reading ebooks. Examples of ebook readers Amazon Kindle, which is one of the most common examples. Also we have another examples from Burns and Nobel Nook and Kobo. Most e-readers use an e-ink display which is easier to read than a traditional computer display. So because those e-book readers use this kind of e-ink you can read very easy even if you are under the sunlight. The third example is the smartphones. Smartphones are more powerful version of traditional cell phone. Why we call it smartphone? Because we can use them for many things more than just making uh, a normal uh, phone call. Smartphones can connect to the internet over the Wi-Fi or cellular, cellular network. You can also use a smartphone for browsing the web, receiving and sending emails, or shopping online. Like the tablets, smartphones use a touch-sensitive screen. You can touch the screen with your finger. They have digital camera and the ability to play digital music and video files. So it, it is like a computer. This is why we call them smartphones. So those are three examples of mobile devices. The smartphones, 
the e-readers or e-book readers and the tablet computer okay to finish our lecture this example just shows the categories of computer as we can see here the personal computer or the desktop the mobile computer mobile devices game consoles servers mainframes supercomputers and embedded computers we uh, didn't cover those three uh, examples in our material and here we have the physical size number of simultaneously connected users general price range computer ergonomics what does it mean it means how to use computer in a safe way and as you can see in this slide these are 12 tips for an ergonomic computer workstation so anyone use a computer especially if he or she is using the computer for a long time for a couple of hours he or she should follow those tips number one use a good chair with a dynamic chair back so your chair should be convenient for sitting on it the top of the monitor it should be above eye level so it shouldn't be down it shouldn't be much up you can use optical glasses specially designed for computer users you need to sit at arms length from the monitor okay so you shouldn't be very close to the monitor also feet on floor or a stable foot foot rest you should put your feet on the on the floor and so on all of these are good tips to walk safely when you are sitting in front of a computer okay so take care about your health and follow those uh, 12 tips okay so at the end these are some revision questions just you can fill those uh, blanks with those words so you need to select the correct one to fill them correctly okay thank you very much and uh, try to solve those questions